Media Professionals and Coffee, we talk about donor relations, fund development, and nonprofit communications with Kaylee Burdell, copywriter and content coordinator at North Bay, Perry Sound District, a health unit that works to improve the health and well being of the whole community. Welcome to Professionals and Coffee, Kaylee. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited and honored to be part of this project and share a bit of my story with you. Okay, thank you. So my first question is, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm curious about how you started your professional journey, career in the world of nonprofit communications, community and donor relations. Sure. So it really started when I was in university at uh, Wilfrid Laurier University, their satellite campus in Brantford. Uh, their main campus is in Waterloo. And a friend of mine who I had actually worked with at a summer camp in my early high school years, uh, he started at Laurier around the same time as me at the main campus. And he had gotten involved in a club called the Laurier Student Alumni Association, or what we would call SAA. And it was a group of students uh, who had worked to influence the student body to give back to the school after they had graduated and become Laurier alumni. Um, so this meant organizing awareness campaigns about the great resources on campus that exist because of alumni donations, um, coordinating events for soon-to-be grads to help them learn what it means to be an alumni and preparing them for the real world. Uh, demonstrating campus pride and supporting the different homecoming events and generating a spirit of giving on campus. And we recognize that, you know, most students don't have thousands of dollars to be dishing out. Um, so we would just encourage them to start giving in more realistic ways uh, with small kind of just because campaigns uh, like a candy gram campaign that we did for Valentine's Day or handing out free hot chocolate in the courtyard or posting sticky notes with kind sayings on them and encouraging people to start thinking about how they can carry out acts of kindness. And outside of school, I was spending an awful lot of time on social media, and I was loving all of these things. So when it came time to figure out what I, my plans were for the summer, I started looking for jobs where I could continue to explore these interests a little deeper and start developing some workplace skills beyond just serving coffees and sweeping floors. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but I saw a Kijiji posting for a communications assistant student position uh, with my local Habitat for Humanity. And I applied and was fortunate enough to land the role. And they were able to receive funding to have my position extended uh, for the fall summer. And I had a really great uh, mentor in that position who really opened my eyes to the nonprofit world. And I was fascinated how such a small team with so few resources, um, you know, when they really work together and commit to a common purpose, they can make a life-changing difference for individuals and families. And to know that I was helping them achieve their mission and spread their message with my own skills and knowledge, it was just really fulfilling. And um, my boss taught me how to write media releases and how to be proactive in preparing uh, a response when it's a potential uh, risk to reputation. Um, at this time, I didn't even know what public relations was, but I knew that I liked what I was doing. Um, I got to see my news release in the small town newspaper, and I was enjoying all the other communications work I was getting to do, and I just wanted more of that. And uh, one degree and one post-grad diploma later, I had a full-time gig that incorporated all of those passions. So uh, it's been a great journey. Uh, we understand that you are the copywriter and content coordinator at North Bay Perry Sound District. What are some of your duties there in, in this role? Uh, yes, so currently I have more of a digital portfolio, and I guess you could say I'm a gatekeeper and a sounding board for the content that we put on our website and social media channels. Uh, sometimes I get to create content myself, and other times I'm proofreading, uh, making revisions, and publishing work that gets submitted to us from others. Um, I also look at our analytics to see how our content is performing and use that data to inform uh, future work. On top of that, I also review our news releases and public service announcements uh, before they go out. And uh, during the pandemic, I would review briefing notes and scripts for the virtual press conferences that we were doing, I think, on a weekly basis back then. Um, but because the health unit covers so many facets of health and people come to me with their key messages, 
I start to feel like a bit of a know-it-all in so many different topics. And really, I'm just a communicator. But I've learned a lot uh, working there, and it's kind of really reshaped my perspective on health. What kind of method have you found most effective when you soliciting cash, in-kind donation, or sponsorships from individual, corporate, or government donors? Well, from my own experience, what I find most effective is to invite them to meet with you at your facility or at the place where your magic happens. You know, let them get a sense of what goes on there, what life is like for the people that you serve. Um, if you're inviting them to an event, uh, seat them with someone who is on the receiving end of your organization services or someone that you know will speak well to the good work that your organization does. Um, at Shepherd's Care, we would often invite potential sponsors to come have lunch or coffee with us in one of the dining rooms where the residents would eat. Um, or if it was political figures, we gave them the opportunity to come to our facility, to shake hands with the residents, and to listen to the residents and have a real meaningful conversations uh, with them about their concerns. Um, but all nonprofits do important work. And if you can let people of influence see it for themselves, um, to make they can make a personal connection with your cause. Um, I think it really pulls out their heartstrings and motivates them to do whatever they can to support you, uh, as long as your values are in alignment. Um, and another piece of advice, specifically for soliciting sponsorships, is to rethink your sponsorship package. Uh, ask yourself how you can do more for your supporters than promise to put their logo on a sign. Um, think outside the box and ask yourself, what is it that they really want to get out of this sponsorship? Um, and what would make them excited to do business with you and support your events over any other event? Um, and if you're stuck, uh, have a third party review your sponsorship package and make some recommendations. Well, oh, thank you. Those are really good uh, recommendations, very creative, and I will take into consideration. Thank you so much, Kate. What have you found to be the best way to establish and maintain positive relationship with uh, sponsors? Now that you have mentioned about the significant participants, with the viewers, with vendors, or stakeholders, or fundraising events. Um. When establishing relationships, uh, prioritize the companies, groups, individuals, uh, centers of influence with common values. Um, but also don't undermine the low hanging fruit, you know, those who already have a connection to your organization, but have yet to kind of take that next step. Um, these can be your current vendors and suppliers, uh, your brand champions, you know, um, everyday people who are always boasting about the wonderful work your organization is doing. Um, and look at people who are already contributing a small amount. Um, if you give those relationships some extra attention, I think there's a chance that they could be inspired to give a little more. Um, and also remember that donations don't always come with dollar signs. You know, some people donate their time, their talents, their treasures, which also go a long way for nonprofits. Um, also, don't forget to look at the next generation of donors. You know, identify who they are and how you can get them hooked on your cause now uh, so that when they can afford to donate to a charity, they will choose to donate to you. Um, when we formed the organizing committee for the Shepherd's Care Cake Auction and 50th anniversary event, uh, we brought on an increasing number of university students or new grads uh, as volunteer committee members. Um, and they always brought such creative ideas and a great work ethic to the table. Um, and it was a mutually beneficial relationship because they were gaining experience they could add to their resume. Uh, they knew they were supporting a good cause and it was beneficial for us uh, because they were opening our minds to new and innovative ideas, um, helping us improve our guest experience. Um, more bodies made for later work, and they were probably going home and telling all their friends about um, our organization and the cool event we were having. Um, so it's great. And I should mention that most of them had family ties to our organization as well. So it wasn't like, you know, we went to the local high school or college and recruited people in the hallway. You know, they had um, some kind of connection already, but we were very strategic um, about who we had on the 
Um, but coming back to your question, I think as communicators, one way we can help our organization to establish new relationships and keep the momentum going afterwards uh, is by storytelling. And I talked before about, or I'll talk a little bit more about bringing people uh, into your facility um, and creating kind of a human connection. But uh, nonprofit staff are stretched thin, and the reality is we don't always have time to sit down with every, you know, Tom, Dick, and Sally and tell them about what you do. Uh, so by using our platforms to spread the word about the good work we do from the perspective of a donor, the perspective of a resident, from a staff member, a sponsor, whomever, uh, I think we can bring help bring some of that human-to-human -human magic to our target audience, uh, wherever they may be. Um, but what also works well uh, is after your event or your fundraising campaign, uh, follow up with a personalized thank you. Um, we like to visit our take action sponsors in person in the days immediately following our event uh, to personally say thanks and drop off a card and uh, some cake pops. And, uh, you know, keep in touch with them throughout the year, be it by email, coffee, lunch meetups, phone calls, handwritten notes. Um, and encourage them to subscribe to your newsletter, follow your social media channel so they can see the great work you're doing um, and what a difference you're making and how you're living up to your mission, vision, and values. And uh, when your big annual campaign comes up, uh, they'll be the first one to open their wallet or their app or however they're choosing to pay these days. Um, but I think, too, in general, uh, a big part of maintaining these positive relationships uh, it's our day-to-day -day efforts as PR professionals to establish a reputation of transparency and accountability. Um, you know, more frequently, we're seeing examples of major sponsors withdrawing their support from people or organizations with big names uh, because whomever they were supporting was caught in a scandal or some kind of controversy, and uh, they didn't own up to it properly or even at all sometimes. And so keeping in touch and storytelling throughout the year is wonderful. But uh, what will really be key to maintaining these relationships and uh, sources of funding uh, is being prepared for when things go south and always being transparent and accountable with your words and actions as an organization. I totally agree with you. I think you have made that good point in terms of that it's really important to keep uh, the relationship not only just for an event, but, but also for a, to have a, a, a long-term relationship uh, because some some of them can become your advocates for your organization or for your cause, and yeah, and to spread the word about the mission, vision of the organization, right? Okay, my mm -hmm. question is, what is the most challenging part of directing or supervising the staff? Uh, for instance, in this case, you including graphic design and or advertising agencies. What is the most challenging part of this uh, part of your job? Um, to be honest, I haven't had too many challenges in this area. Everyone I've worked with internally or externally has been a really great team player. Um, but I think if you, A, have all your homework done in advance, uh, B, are very clear with them about your vision and expectations for a project up front, and C, allow them uh, the time and the space to ask questions. Uh, I think by doing those three things, you can prevent a lot of challenges from uh, brewing, I guess. Uh, and also, if you can stick to having only one uh, designer, photographer, videographer, et cetera, uh, that you go to for projects, it will help bring forward that consistent branding and you can easily develop a good working relationship. Uh, and get a good sense for how the other person works and what both parties need to do to help the other one be successful. Um, sometimes people will cold call you and offer their services without a really proper introduction and it kind of feels like spam, but I always believe that if you trust your gut, uh, it will all turn out okay. Um, could you share an example where you effectively contacted corporate representatives government officials or community leaders to increase awareness of your organizational campaigns activities or it? Yes. So as part of the requirements of the PR program at McEwen, uh, we had to do a short internship. And I did mine at Built Green Canada, 
uh, which to my surprise is actually a very small company, but they're doing huge things for the home building industry. Um, and National Environment Week was coming up and they were going to launch Built Green Day, uh, which they had launched for the first time the year prior. So this would be their second year running this campaign. And what that entailed was contacting municipalities across Canada uh, to proclaim a day during National Environment Week as Built Green Day and uh, encourage home builders in their community to adapt building policies that would lead to more sustainable environmentally friendly homes, you know, homes that are built green. Um, and because it was only in its second year, we weren't anticipating too high of an uptake, um, but we understood our target audience. We had a good idea of what their wants and needs were uh, and what information they would need to make going along with our campaign an easy and almost effortless decision. Um, and so once we were happy with everything we had drafted and we confirmed our contact list, uh, we sent out our ask to the municipalities and ended up having a small handful agree to uh, get on board with it. And it was really uh, exciting for me to see that a project I had contributed to uh, was picked up in different provinces. Uh, but what was most impactful for myself was the fact that our own municipality was in favor of it. And that day in early June was built Green Day in my city because of me and our tiny powerhouse of a nonprofit. Um, so I was doing some research the other night, and it's amazing to see how many more municipalities uh, throughout the country have accepted the challenge. Uh, and I think there are almost up to 40 or more now. So it's really cool. Well, congratulations. That it's, that's a great success, a professional success. What would be your best advice to someone interested in entering the world of donor relations and fund development within the nonprofit sector? Uh, work hard and be nice to people. That's all there is to it. Thank you so much, Kelly, for letting us have a bit of your time and for teaching us more about donor relations, fund development, and nonprofit organization. Thanks again for having me, and thank you so much for everything you and your team are doing to put a spotlight on our profession and help students and new grads build their network and build their resume. I think it's really special what you're doing, and I look forward to watching more episodes. Okay, thank you. Well. Everything we do here works because of you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our, our social media networks. Click the link in the description below this video and please join us to do your own virtual coffee chat as I did today. I hope you enjoyed our discussion and learn a lot about donor relations, fund development and nonprofit organizations. Thank you.